it's uh, my pleasure to meet you today. Um, so, um, hope you have a nice day in Swansea or Apetawe in Welsh. Um, so, um, we had a um, very interesting talk and now uh, I'm going to just briefly cover some of the aspects uh, in uh, uh, scientific software design which is the use of um, functional programming in finite element analysis. Um, actually, uh, my beginning, at the beginning, my intention was quite, uh, my ambition is a bit large, but uh, it's not easy to, to, to touch all these aspects um, from the function, functional world of programming and parallelization. So it's, yeah, uh, mostly I will, um, explore some aspects only and uh, I'm just here to learn from you as well because I know lots of you uh, have some um, experience in uh, this uh, new programming paradigms not very new but uh, very uh, un uh, unconventional um, at least yeah so <clears throat> Uh, we are at Edinburgh. I know that Edinburgh has um, some influence on the development of the ML, which is the meta language back in the 70s. Um, but uh, I'm not working in the computer science department. I'm doing um, civil engineering. Uh, and my colleagues, uh, Kenny, uh, who's in Singapore now, he had some experience in functional programming in uh, Glasgow and uh, we had an um, interesting meeting meetup uh, in Singapore where yeah uh, we discussed um, lots of applications uh, in functional programming so um, let's um, briefly discuss about the finite element method. Um, we know that this is um, a very uh, um, popular method in engineering. And uh, uh, actually there are lots, lots of software written um, just in finite element uh, and also many textbooks about that. Um, the earliest version and um, finite element I think it uh, was written in Fortran, but there's there was also a version in Lisp as well, which is functional programming. But then the concept, when they deployed to the industry, they stick to the uh, imperative uh, approach and then um, deployed in Fortran or C. And then they took a bit further more to object-oriented programming, which is um, very natural because um, at the time, uh, object-oriented was kind of very uh, fashionable approach that they are trying to grasp the attention and the functional programming is uh, less, less uh, 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 interest. Uh, however, um, the core of the program in finite element is the same. So we, we just uh, look at the graph on the right. It's just taken from the textbook of uh, Durant in um, the finite, element, finite difference method for uh, the geophysical fluid and mix. So we want to approximate a um, curve like this. Um, we can put on the uh, points, different discrete points, which is the um, finite difference method but then they want to make it better. Uh, instead of the point, they want to introduce the slope also. Okay, so the, with the slope attached to each point, they have the finite volume method. Yeah, but then they have found a more flexible way uh, for doing that uh, by introducing a piecewise function to approximate. So imagine mm, if you have um, 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 familiar with familiarity with the 
Fourier series of method that maybe it seems natural for you. But uh, instead, uh, this final element, uh, instead of using the um, sine and cosine functions, they use just a um, discrete piecewise function, which is uh, shown below. So they are all um, very simple in the sense that at the nodal point, the value of this function is one, and uh, outside is you know, zero. Yeah. So it's like the stick choking up at each uh, nodal point like this. But it becomes very powerful if we combine it into a polynomial with the um, coefficient b, coefficient just um, um, a scalar. But it serves as a uh, like a knob for us to tune the model so that uh, the, our polynomial fit best to, to the unknown function u. Um, let's take an uh, example, uh, a very basic example, you know, the possible equation for uh, heat transfer, where we have this um, uh, second derivative, derivative of the un unknown function u uh, um, in space and multiplied by a constant and uh, it equals um, a focusing function f. Okay, so this is a PDE. Yeah, this PDE is just one dimension. It's, I mean, it's very easy for you to solve it, right? You can solidify that difference. Yeah, uh, but okay, but for the purpose, our purpose, we solve with finite um, element. So by um, first, we have to, okay, we have to find a, a weak form for this, okay, how? So by um, multiplied by test function W and then integrate uh, both uh, side, the left hand and the right hand side, uh, uh, integrate over the uh, region of interest. Um, so we have this this form, and we take the um, partial integration uh, integration by parts on the left hand side. We we'll arrive at the weak form. Then, uh, then when we discretize, we can replace that with the uh, um, function uh, as approximation function uh, with a b and s this y function s and coefficient b, like above. So it's very clever way to discretize. And we end up with a matrix, a six by six uh, in this case, but uh, generally much bigger uh, in multi-dimension engineering systems. Okay, so that, that we can solve, use uh, uh, techniques to solve uh, the equation. Now, um, mostly we we would think that okay, so we have this uh, equation for the matrix. We have to pick a very suitable tool for solving that. Okay, so we just pick okay, uh, just a, a very established uh, numerical library for that purpose, late pack, um, and it boom. It, then we go to uh, just procedural or imperative programming. Okay, so that's so really, really um, um, uh, inconvenient. Uh, we we don't feel it very comfortable because at one time we have to to to, to do it uh, in a procedural procedural way. Okay, so it's not very good. But actually, um, as I mentioned briefly mentioned earlier, we had um, uh, institute who invest in. Uh, developing the functional algorithm for solving the finite element uh, problem. Uh, and um, the reason why they do so, okay, is that uh, among the couple of key features in functional programming, okay, that re represent a big problem uh, with a big function, okay, and then they decompose that function into smaller, smaller, smaller parts. Okay, so uh, in doing so, they have introduced the 
function as a very important factor. It's just important factor as the data types itself. The data type we have int, we have float, we have uh, double, and we have uh, function yeah, as well. Yeah. And in Haskell, uh, one of the key programming language that we mentioned, and they also develop in, uh, we have the uh, type variable as well. Okay, so the, uh, we, we, we can use the variable to hold the type as well as the values. So the type turns out a very important factor in functional programming. And we see the inside the computer, we have lots and lots of bits, bits of data, zero, one, ones. Okay, uh, but how to make that bit useful? How to differentiate a bit? from just an integer, a bit for the byte, a bit for character, unicode character, or a bit for a string. Um, that depends on the type. Yeah, we have to manage the type. We have to control the type and we have a kind of uh, make it manageable uh, so that the bit actually play, play a useful role. Um, now to do so, they developed uh, this functional uh, programming language uh, called Haskell with uh, features, lots of benefits. Uh, it is type safety, meaning that we, uh, okay, uh, we cannot accidentally mix up the type yeah, when we, we call the function or we do the computation, which is very, uh, very useful feature. Okay, we uh, may not, we may not uh, appreciate fully appreciate for that because we 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 calculate the numbers. We say okay, forget about this type. We I just want to play with the numbers, so I just keep them as numbers. Numbers uh, can be real or integers. Mm, no, we don't want the integers. We want to be the real numbers because we we okay double in double precision. We want to uh, we want the number to be as precise as possible. Okay. But it turns out that when we develop the software, it's not just the number, it's other um, pieces of information as well. As I mentioned, the functions is also a piece of information that we have to preserve its value. Okay, so we have to introduce the type safety, yeah, so that the, uh, any error error in the in the type can be detected at compile time. Okay, at uh, uh, the functional programming also uh, is very suitable for certain math formulation as well. Um, um, it may not be very uh, good for uh, the matrix, but uh, for the algorithm like shorting, a rec recursive algorithm is very useful. And uh, it can help us to extend the program to parallel versions as well because of one of the most barrier, important barrier in parallel programming is just a race condition between the uh, threads. So we have to, to eliminate that. Uh, and one of the most useful ways is to use the functional programming. Um, okay, so there's a uh, burden uh, in development, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, there are numerical methods developed, uh, especially for uh, computing in the imperative style. Yeah, so to the right textbook for that. So that's how we have to, to deal with that. <clears throat> okay, so actually there are some institute to, to develop the functional programming approach for finite element, uh, not all, only in the UK, I know Swansea. I see that um, from the uh, uh, Imperial College of London and the, in the island as well. Uh, and of course, functional programming uh, widely widely uh, researched in uh, Cambridge, uh, Oxford, and yeah, in Glasgow and Edinburgh, but less in uh, uh, finite element. Because as I mentioned, uh, most of them have adopted the uh, OOP object oriented approach. Um, outside of UK, I just picked up some of the um, development in Western Europe only. In the US, yes, they have in the US, they have the this version, but then they um, they feel about um, the turn to toward the object oriented approach. And of course, we have um, uh, <clears throat> individuals who, who 
interest in, in, in the functional program. And they publish the code on, on GitHub. Mm -hmm. And actually, I use one of the code. So uh, the Haskell code is from uh, uh, Bernd. Uh, he's uh, currently uh, residing in Austria. He's uh, uh, doing in, in tech time uh, industry. Um, so uh, in the GitHub, he introduces very simple uh, Haskell code to, to solve the one possible question. Five minutes. Yeah. And with uh, one main function, main, uh, and then uh, uh, the main has only a, it is only allowed to 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 um, connect with uh, the user. Okay, so we 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 connect. We can supply uh, the text. Uh, the we we initiate uh, the computing. We provide the parameters, and in the main, it, it calls a new plot uh, library to, to produce this plot on the left on the right. Okay, so this main uh, is uh, connected to the uh, main, okay, to the core of computing, the Haspam of HS. Uh, okay, this is the core of solving the equation. So uh, it uh, connects to the grid. Uh, the grid is uh, about the data management. Yeah. And it connects to the Haspam internal of HS. So the Haspam internal is, uh, is uh, yeah. Okay. How to calculate? Uh, how to to calculate in the in the, um, in the grid? And actually, the uh, husband here uh, calls uh, performs the call to to solve this uh, possible equation in one dimension. Um, in this code, uh, he um, attempt to test. Uh, the numerical solution with the reference solution, which is a part of here, a uh, very simple form. And uh, try to compile with the GHC, which is produced in an executable of, of 5.7 Mac class uh, in Linux, which is very, yeah, comp comparatively very small and it's very fast to, to, to compute. Uh, we, uh, when I uh, apply this to uh, 20,000 uh, nodal points, it just takes uh, about uh, um, 25 seconds to run. Yeah, not that good, right? Because yeah, you can say that, okay, so, uh, your MATLAB um, Fortran library will be faster. No, hey, look, it's a uh, functional program. And then we have to solve the function uh, in uh, uh, by step by step. Yeah, so it's really not very uh, uh, comparable, but yeah, it's feasible to implement that. <clears throat> Another attempt is to try with a scalar. Yeah, okay, so with a scalar, as I promised, I, I want to do it, but uh, unfortunately, I haven't the chance to cook it with a uh, functional programming uh, approach yet, but uh, really, I want to do that. Uh, so this uh, this one gives uh, the breeze, um, uh, Library for numerical numerical computing uh, with scalar, uh, we uh, have a closer approach towards the functional programming, and um, yeah, and uh, the chance to, to ex extend it is very um, very well, uh, yeah, very easy and very straightforward. So this um, uh, basically with uh, uh, on the equation, we just uh, do this uh, vector stiffness matrix and solve it. Yeah, still in empirical, empirical way, and then use a um, um, uh, library to plot that. Unfortunately, this at this stage is not complete yet. Yeah. So yeah. So this um, yeah, I had some. Uh, a look, a brief look at the Swan CCFD code and to contrast uh, both way doing in functional and, and uh, in imperative way. And actually, it's um, uh, very uh, just a preliminary test uh, with the functional programming. Yeah, it's very challenging as well. And I hope that uh, we can somehow extend it, uh, but mostly to have to verify it first. 
and before moving further to multidimensional and uh, parallelization. Thank you. So maybe I'll start with one that comes to mind. Um, did you benchmark your functional uh, toy examples um, against anything procedural? Mm. Do you have any idea of the relative performance? Mm. Not yet. Yeah, I haven't done a uh, benchmark report yet. Yes, uh, I have to explore the chance with uh, Haskell tools or that. Yeah, but uh, um, as my first test, I use um, I tried the code with uh, twenty uh, thousand elements, and it costs it uh, takes twenty five seconds to run it, ah, which I think is not a positive sign. Yeah, because the code is not really good enough. Yeah, so I I will try to scale it with a different input size to see yeah how the algorithm goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. There is a question up there. Uh, functional programming seems like a nice fit for matrix-free methods. Have you tried this? Um, no, not, not actually. Yeah, this is my first uh, um, app outside of the uh, uh, tutorials of the Lingo. So, yeah, but, um, but yes, they are uh, good for uh, algorithm like a divide and conquer and uh, uh, sorting, searching, yeah, with the trees. Actually, the CFD code in Swansea that I briefly mentioned, well, they use uh, functional programming for sorting the index of the global matrix. When you have a smart matrix, a very big size, it uh, requires a very clever way to manage it. And then they, they have uh, used a tree for that. Yeah, binary tree in exact, which turns out very efficient way. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next one is, uh, oh, they've both got the same number of folks. Um, what is the biggest benefit you see in functional programming for uh, research software engineers in general? Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's happy to see it, say that it's it's for curiosity because yeah you you do the you only by funding uh, imperative uh, procedural running object oriented code oh so what is the need for functional programming yeah is it for intellectual purpose only yeah for me it's very hard to say but I can see one aspect yeah there are uh, there are um, people doing the math and. PhD in, in computer science uh, have a very good uh, knowledge in theoretical computing. Yeah. And uh, they have, uh, they are surely very good in functional programming so they can use their expertise yeah, to tackle the problem um, in engineering. Yeah. So they can be very good in, uh, yeah, in, in extending their the skills uh, for the industry yeah, just to explore the, your uh, opportunities of doing so. Uh, because I, I see that some um, uh, of the uh, say, uh, capital market use functional programming, yeah, which is really good, yeah, to, to, to make sure that the program runs without um, error, yeah, in, uh, in mind is very good itself. Thank you very much.